What's going on everyone? Austin John plays here and today I'm going to be going over how you can get the Paraglider in Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I know this is going to sound really, really silly out of context, but I guarantee there's going to be people who cannot find the Paraglider. I know because it took me 45 minutes, I'm ashamed to say, to find the paraglider. And it was just literally right next to me. So I just wanted to share with you how you get the paraglider. It's so simple, but it's so dumb and it's easy to miss and it's not explained well. So I'm gonna show you how to get the paraglider. You don't start with the paraglider in this game. You jump off of the sky right from here right down to nothingness. And yes, you may mark some various points throughout the area and make your way to Lookout Landing, but then it's gonna tell you to go to Hyrule Castle. Not in the same way that before it was like, go defeat Ganon, good luck getting there. But instead, you're tasked with coming here specifically to join the search for the princess below Hyrule Castle. And on your way, there's some shrines, so definitely go activate that as a fast travel point, if not complete it. And also, there's a sweet little monument here to the memory of the souls lost to the calamity oh and there's a little tutorial on bolson construction and how to fix signs these are always like a fantastic way for you to actually figure out how to build things and how to make them stand up even though there's a great starting point right here and after he says he's standing speak to him again you're gonna get a free meal who loves a free meal definitely this guy some rupees and uh maybe a little bit of advice maybe a third item and i have to say that is that is not a great construction job. They're the number one construction company in Hyrule. Make your way through the doors the same way you did in the last game by opening them. And as you're coming up, there's the full glory of Hyrule Castle. And surprisingly, where you are, it's not gonna be infested with monsters. Not allowed to go in there yet. And all the guards here are just to say to go to the first gatehouse. Well, once you make your way to the first gatehouse, there's there's nothing really in here. Just a torch, a couple of wooden crates with some arrows, and a guy who lets you know that all of the weapons throughout all of Hyrule are now decayed. So they're less powerful than they used to be. That's the reason they have all this black sludge on them. It was at this point that I looked around furiously for 45 minutes, but no one tells you that you just need to go to the top of the guardhouse. If you come around out the outside, there's going to be a staircase. And then, pretty easy for you to ascend up via some basic climbing. And then these two guards over here, they say keep searching. And there's going to be a short cutscene that takes place. After that short little cutscene takes place, you're then free to fast travel back to the shrine that you unlocked and walk south back down to the lookout landing. After making your way back to lookout landing, we're going to be heading back upstairs to where we first talked to Pura. And she's going to be over here. We're going to get a nice look at the local tower. Also, there's suspiciously a monster den right behind it. But it seems like Pura and Robbie took like the old Sheikah tech that's just been lying around everywhere and then making it into their own towers, which is pretty neat. And when you head over to the Lookout Landing Skyview Tower, we're going to speak with Pura. I like how the switch is literally just a repurposed guardian. Maybe they weren't able to extract the power sources. I don't know. You're going to see the top of a tower open. That's actually important for later on. A giant signal goes out and now all the towers in the region are going to have their lights active as long as the towers are powered. I say that because unlike Breath of the Wild, where you just go to every tower, some of them actually involve a little bit of a puzzle in order for you to activate it. And some of them can be a little bit difficult. I am going to be putting out a video on the location of all the towers as well as how to open them up. Let's go ahead, interact with the terminal, put our Pura pad on top of it. That activates the fast travel point. And she goes ahead and gives you the paraglider with the default sailcloth. The funniest thing is that all of these need to be calibrated because they were just built. You have these giant guardian arms coming and like attacking Link and holding his person in place. They plug in his USB-C cable and they have a giant line on it for feeding data back down to the tower and then begins the cutscene of You Unlocked a Tower. It's a great cutscene. It really is.
Well, anyways, guys, there you go. Now for Tears of the Kingdom, you're going to get the paraglider. I didn't know that you had to go to the roof. No one says you have to go to the roof. I couldn't, I, I couldn't find where we had to go. They just say, go to the first guardhouse. Turns out you had to go to the top of it. And then you have to go and speak with specific people in a specific order. And there you go. Now you have the paraglider. Feel free to jump back up to the sky and explore that or go around and mark everything down and you're good to go. For a whole bunch more simple tips and tricks videos as well as a whole bunch of tutorials and guides, be sure to be subscribed here at Austin Sean Plays. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. Until next time, Austin Sean out.